In this video, I'm going to share five ETFs that you might want to consider if you're trying to beat the market or to generate a nice consistent dividend yield. All five ETFs I'm going to share with you in this video, they offer something different, something unique that might be a good fit for your portfolio. I'm going to share what I like about them, but also some of the things I don't like about them that'll help you make your decision. Keep in mind that as we move through this video, the dividend yields will get higher and higher. So the lowest dividend is the first one and the highest is the last one. And at the end, I'm going to share a bonus with you. I'm going to share the dividend strategy I'm currently using right now to receive high dividends, but also line myself up for stock price appreciation. This first ETF, MOAT, ticker symbol MOAT, almost didn't make the list because it has a very low dividend yield. But I had to share it with you because what it's done compared to the S&P 500 on almost every single time frame. Here you see a chart comparing Moat against the S&P 500 over the past 10 years. Notice it has beat it hands down when it comes to price return. When we switch to total return, it's also beat it by a nice wide margin. We see the same thing on the five year time frame. Although it didn't beat it by much, it did beat it again on total return. When you look at the three year time frame, again, we see that it beat it by almost 10%. In fact, of these time frames, the only one it hasn't beat the S&P 500 on is in the one year time frame. So overall, this was like a nice long term investment and one that could possibly beat the S&P 500 over the long term. So what is Moat? What does this ETF focus on that enables it to consistently beat the S&P 500? Well, first, as we see here, it screens it for companies that are attractively valued. That means they try and screen out companies that are overvalued. But here's where its name Moat comes into play. I think we're all familiar with the term Moat and what it means for business. It means that it has a strategic advantage. It sits in a position that's very hard for its competitors to come take its customers or come take its business. This ETF is screened by Morningstar, who tries to pick companies who have a competitive advantage against other companies. In fact, they focus on companies that don't just have a moat, but have a wide moat. They then try to pick companies that have attractive prices based on Morningstar's estimate fair value for that company. Here you see the breakdown of the various sectors that moat is invested into, as well as its top 10 holdings. Notice that healthcare makes up over 20% of this ETF. That's followed by financials at over 18%, industrials at almost 18%, and technology at almost 16%. At the bottom, you see its top 10 holdings, including Salesforce, Equifax, US Bank Corp, Wells Fargo, and Google. I like a lot of things about this ETF. In fact, the only thing that I really don't like is its dividend. As you see here, it pays a very small dividend at less than 1% annualized. So if you're looking for a high starting dividend, Mode is probably not the ETF for you. But don't worry, because the next four, they have a really nice starting dividend. Although Moat doesn't have a nice high dividend, what it does do really well is beat the S&P 500. And it's made up of companies that potentially have a nice, strong, wide moat that protects them from their competitors. Now we get into dividends that have a higher starting dividend yield. The lowest of the four is SCHD, but it is an ETF that I really like. One thing I like about it is that it has a nice low expense ratio of only 0.06%. So you're not giving up much return for investing in an ETF as compared to buying stocks on your own. Most of you probably know what SCHD is, but briefly, it's an ETF that screens for several things. The first is their annual dividend yield, but it also checks companies for their free cash flow to debt ratios, return on equity, five-year dividend growth rate, and to make the list, they must have had at least 10 consecutive years of dividend payments. This helps the ETF be made up of companies that have nice dividend growth and are high quality companies. Here are some of the pros and cons of SCHD. Now I mentioned the things that I like about this ETF. Let's consider a few things that are maybe cons or disadvantages of the ETF. First, if you're looking for a very diversified portfolio, SCHD isn't as diversified as the S&P 500. In fact, as you see here, it's made up of only about 100 stocks. So that may be diversified for a lot of investors, but if you want large diversification, then SCHD might not be a good fit for you. Also, because there's a bit of screening for both companies that are allowed into the ETF and ones that are pulled out of it, then there can be a little bit higher turnover. And one final factor to consider, which is one that's kind of important to me, is that SCHD excludes real estate and is underweighted when it comes to utilities. So if having real estate and utility exposure is important to you, then SCHD might not be a fit for you. Or if you do like it, but would like some real estate and more utility exposure, you want to pick up that exposure in some other way. As you see here, SCHD pays a nice starting dividend of right at 3.44%. And this dividend is known to grow over time. So if you're looking for a nice starting dividend, as well as one that's been proven to grow over time, SCHD might be an ETF you want to look into. Our third ETF that you might want to consider is one that not only gives you some higher dividends, 
but also gives you low volatility. There's nothing like watching your portfolio crash in value during a market crash. Well, this ETF tries to focus on companies that pay you a nice high dividend, but have a record for being less volatile than the overall market. Its expense ratio is a little bit higher at 0.3%. Notice in addition to screening for a high dividend, as well as a lower volatility compared to the overall market, SPHT selects 50 of the 500 largest companies in the US to be a part of this ETF. And just know that it rebalances this portfolio twice a year in January and July. Here are some of the things I like about SPHD. I like that it has a nice higher starting dividend. In fact, it's higher than SCHD. And I'll show you what it is in just a second. I also like that it has a volatility screen. We all would like a nice high return and nice high dividends without that volatility. That's what this ETF attempts to do. Then I also like that it pays its dividend monthly. Who wouldn't want to get paid monthly as compared to once a quarter? Now a couple of things that I don't necessarily care for about this ETF. Remember, it's only made up of 50 companies, so you're not quite as diversified as the S&P 500 is. In fact, you're only one-tenth as diversified. So if big diversification is important to you, well, this ETF might not be for you. Also, it does have a higher expense ratio as compared to other ETFs like SCHD. And then if you don't want exposure to stocks known as SIN stocks, then just keep in mind that this ETF also might not be for you. But if the pros outweigh the cons, you have a nice high starting dividend yield to work with with this ETF. Notice that it's currently paying right at 4.52% annual when it comes to dividends. Its top 10 holdings include companies like AT&T, Verizon, Simon Property Group, Altria, 3M, Prudential Financial, and IBM. So a nice diversified mix, but those top 10 holdings, they do make up over 28% of this ETF. Remember, as we keep going through this video, our dividend yields get higher and higher. So now let's move on to number four, and that's SPYD, or the S&P 500 High Yield ETF. This ETF takes that basket of the S&P 500 stocks and adds a dividend twist. It's designed to capture the performance of the 80 highest yielding dividend stocks in the S&P 500. Now let's focus on some of the things that I like and don't like about this ETF. First, I like that it has a nice low expense ratio. It comes in at only 0.07%. And I like that it has a nice high starting dividend yield, which I'll share with you in just a minute. I also like that it's taken from the S&P 500. These are 500 of the largest companies in the US. It's a nice place to pick some really solid companies to hold forever. Now a few of the things you might wanna consider if you're thinking about investing in this ETF. Right now, because of its screening, it does have a higher concentration of financial and real estate stocks. So if you're wanting to avoid those two sectors, then this might not be the ETF for you. Also keep in mind that although it's pulled from the S&P 500, this ETF is only made up of about 80 holdings. So it's a lot fewer companies than the overall S&P 500. But if you like the pros and they outweigh the cons for you, you're rewarded with a nice high starting dividend yield of 4.67%. And that's made up of some companies that you're probably familiar with and maybe some that you're not so familiar with. Here you see it includes companies like Philips 66, Amgen, IBM, and the Simon Property Group. And those top 10 holdings make up right at 15.6% of this overall ETF. In just a minute, I'm going to share that bonus with you that I mentioned to you at the beginning of this video. I'm going to share how we're building our dividend stock portfolio that gives us a nice high starting dividend, but also gives us a great opportunity for dividend growth as well as tremendous capital appreciation. But before I share that with you, the fifth and final ETF I thought you might consider if you want that nice high starting dividend is JEPI or JEPI. This dividend comes in right at 8.22% annualized. But this ETF does some things that the other ETFs don't. It does pull its basket of stocks from the S&P 500, but it then uses equity-linked notes and options to generate this nice high dividend. JEPI and its sister ETF, JEPQ, are known for that high dividend, but they're not known for capital appreciation or dividend growth. If you'd like to learn more about JEPI, I'll leave a link to a video I made about it down in the description. To compare them all side by side, I've lined them up next to each other here. So here you see the dividend yields range from a low with moat of 0.85% to a high with JEPI of 8.22%. Just keep in mind, some of these are designed for cash flow like JEPI and not really much appreciation, and others are designed to actually beat the market like moat, which has beat the S&P 500 over the past 10 years. Using ETFs can be a really simple and easy way to invest in a basket of stocks. But if you have a little more time, you might consider cherry picking stocks. As you see here in one of the alerts I sent out to my patrons, at least once a month, we buy stocks that we believe are potentially undervalued or are fairly valued that have the potential for stock price and or dividend appreciation. By cherry picking companies we believe are potentially undervalued, we're able to get a starting dividend yield that we like, line ourselves up for dividend appreciation, while also giving us the opportunity for capital appreciation if the stocks we bought return to fair value. Every weekend, I send my patrons two lists. 
The first is my top five list of companies that are looking interesting from a technical standpoint. The ones I'm looking to buy and sell options in, as well as potentially buy outright in my stock ownership account. The second part of that list is companies that based on my research, I believe are either fairly valued or potentially even undervalued. These are companies that give me the opportunity to possibly collect some nice starting dividends, lining up for dividend growth, but also reap the benefits if these companies return to a fair market value. If you'd like to get these lists sent to you every single weekend, check out the benefits of becoming a patron down at the link in the description below. Two of the ETFs I mentioned in this video were JetBee and SCHD. They both offer unique characteristics that can be a fit for certain types of portfolios. If you'd like to see these two ETFs compared side by side, check out the video at the link above in the description below about JetBee and SCHD. Until next time, happy investing, and we'll see you again soon.